Hello everybody. In today's episode we are going to look at the thought experiment known as Maxwell's Demon. And this was created by James Clerk Maxwell in the year 1867 and it concerns entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. And this puzzle went unsolved for an extremely long time and it wasn't until much later that the solution to this puzzle was actually found. So the puzzle concerns entropy as I said and in the last few videos we've seen a thermal definition of entropy in terms of heat and temperature, we've also seen a statistical mechanical version of entropy, the so-called um, order to chaos version or the macrostates and microstates version. Um, but what this does is this experiment shines light on perhaps the most fundamental version of entropy, that version of entropy which is concerned with information. And that was developed by the physicist Shannon and it's often called the Shannon entropy. But without further ado, let's get into the puzzle itself, Maxwell's demon. So, the second law of thermodynamics states that for a thermally isolated system, for a system sealed off from anything else, that entropy over time will always increase. So delta S, the change in entropy, is greater than or equal to zero. So we always move from a low entropy state to a high entropy state, and then we never see a fall in entropy. We'll just reach some maximum entropy and then we'll stay there with our system. Um, the example I've been using is that if I have a box of gas up in the top corner of the room and then I open the window to that box of gas, the gas will expand to roughly evenly fill the whole room. And the reason it does that is that the gas filling the whole room is a much higher entropy state of affairs than all the gas remaining in the top corner when it's not confined by a box. So for our system, we always see an increase in entropy. And this is what the thought experiment says. So here I have a box and I've got two chambers A and B. I've got my little demon here, we'll come to him. Now, imagine if you will that to start off with all the gas is over here in section A. And then we lift up our little flap and what we will find is that due to the second law of thermodynamics, the gas will roughly evenly occupy both chambers A and B when it has the opportunity to do so. And if you hang around at the end of this video, I will give you a proof to that. It's actually a very nice proof. It builds on the first law of thermodynamics and the ideal gas equation, both of which we've covered. So if you've been following along, stick around for that. Um, so the gas fills both chambers of the room, but now we have the influence of our sneaky little demon. And what our demon does is that the demon is watching this. And what the demon does is that every time he sees a molecule going from chamber two, from chamber B towards chamber A, he opens up the flap and he allows it to pass. But whenever he sees a molecule from chamber A going into chamber B, he shuts the door and he doesn't let it pass. And he keeps doing this over and over and over again until eventually we have virtually no molecules left in chamber B. He has allowed all the molecules to go from chamber B into chamber A, but he's not allowed any molecules to go from chamber A to chamber B. Um, and this seems to be totally at odds with the second law of thermodynamics, because by intervening here, he has um, taken us from a high entropy state of affairs, where the gas fills both sides of the box evenly, to a low entropy state of affairs, back to where all the gas is in chamber A and none is in chamber B. And the question is, how can this be possible? Um, so it's also worth saying that I know we've talked about um, the second law in terms of entropy, but this demon could just do the same thing as well to allow molecules to move from a hotter area to a colder area and none in reverse, and that would violate the Clausius statement of the second law. So essentially this demon is out here making a mockery of the second law of thermodynamics, and that can't stand. We need to figure out how he's doing it and why what he's doing isn't a violation. Um, now, a couple of things you might want to say, first of all, is that, well, we have found that uh, when you put work into a system, then you are allowed to go to a lower entropy state of affairs. For example, our fridge, we put a lot of electrical energy and we put a lot of work into that system, and that allows us to suck hot heat out of a cold box and eject it into a hot room. So there's no violation of the second law when we can put work in, that is when the system is not thermally isolated. But this demon doesn't appear to be doing any work because any work he does in lifting up this flap here, any work he does against gravity to lift up the flat, he's getting back that same amount of work when he drops the flap 
because gravity is working in the same direction. So whatever he puts in to lift it, he's getting back out when he drops it. So we can't fall back on the demon putting work into the system in that respect because there's no net work being done in that respect. Um, another solution, you might think, which was actually thought by a lot of people for a long time, is that um, the act of observation here is what's going to save us. So in order to carry this thing out, the demon has to shine light on these molecules to observe them. And perhaps that shining of light is enough to increase entropy in order to counteract the decrease in entropy we've got by sorting these molecules like the demon is doing. But alas, we can't fall back on that either, because it was found that we can do this with very, very low energies of light and very, very little dissipation of heat and anything like that. And the amount of light and heat we need to do this is not enough to counteract the drop in entropy which the demon is doing here. So we don't have um, a get out from doing work and we don't have a get out from observation. So what is the solution here? Well, it wasn't until much later that a solution was found in terms of information. And this is the information concept of entropy as developed by the physicist Shannon, often known as the Shannon entropy. And the remarkable thing about this is, is that entropy was found to be fundamentally associated with the storage of information. And for the demon to operate this, the demon needs to have a memory. He needs to remember where he's seeing molecules and he needs to remember what he's doing. He needs to store information in his own memory in order to operate this system and to keep sorting these atoms. And it was found that there is an associated increase in entropy with this process. So I said that um, it's the storage of memory. That's not technically correct. It's actually the erasure of memory. So it was found by Shannon, and this is something we will go on to discuss in future videos, that um, whenever we delete a bit of information, we are increasing entropy of um, the whole system by a factor of kb ln 2. And we will get on to show this in the next couple of videos. Um, so whenever the, um, so this, the demon could be doing this in a reversible way, but only if he has an infinite memory. But whenever he has to erase memory in order to make new room for new memory, he is increasing the entropy within the system of himself plus this box by, a fact, by an amount kb ln 2. And as he continues to erase information, he will continue to increase entropy. And this increase in entropy is greater or equal to the decrease in entropy we have from um, this system being sorted in the way the demon is doing. And that's the solution here. It shines light on yet another facet of entropy. So we've seen the thermal definition and the statistical definition, but the information theory definition is just as equivalent to those two. And it's why entropy is such an amazing concept, because we think of it in all these different ways that appear fundamentally distinct from one another, but are actually all linked together. So although the different ways of thinking about entropy appear to be entirely separate, the concept of entropy, which is so abstract to us, lies behind all three of them. And it's only by seeing all these different aspects of entropy that we can come to get an understanding and an appreciation of it. Right, so that's the thought experiment. Um, in the next bit, if you want to hang around, I'll just go through a quick proof of why um, the gas filling both chambers uh, is associated with an increase of entropy in the first place. For those of you who are following along with some of the physics, you might want to hang around and see that. Right, so let's do the proof. So in the last video, we saw that the first law of thermodynamics can be expressed in the form du, the change in internal energy, is equal to the temperature multiplied by the change in entropy minus the pressure multiplied by the change in volume. And we also saw in a much earlier video the ideal gas law that says for an ideal gas, pressure times volume is equal to N, the number of molecules, multiplied by Kb, the Boltzmann constant, multiplied by the temperature T. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to rearrange this. You'll see why in a second. So here we have pressure is equal to N Kb T over V. That's just rearranging this formula. And next what I'm going to say is that for an isothermal expansion of an ideal gas, if we're not changing the temperature, then the change in internal energy 
must be zero. So now we have TDS is equal to PDV. So we have DS from this equation is equal to P over T dV. And now we're going to sub in this. So this is equal to um, the T at the bottom here will cancel with this T. So we have N KB over V dV. Now, what we want to do is calculate the change in entropy when our gas goes from one volume V in chamber A to a volume of 2V in chambers A plus B. So we have the change in entropy, the whole change in entropy, which I write as delta S, that's equal to the integral of dS going from volume V to 2V. And now we're going to sub in dS from here. So um, bringing out the NKV, the constant, to the front. Then we have the integral of dV over V from V to 2V. And hopefully you know that the integral of 1 over V with respect to V is ln V. So here we have this is equal to NKB. Um, and then we have ln of V between V, sorry, between V down here and 2V. And then that's equal to NKB ln of 2v minus ln of v. And when you have two logarithms like this, that's the same as saying ln 2v minus ln of v is exactly the same as saying ln of 2v divided by v. So the v's cancel, and then you get that is equal to nkb ln of 2. And this is positive. And there you have it. Um, that is why if we have a gas, and we open a door so that it can effectively double its volume, the gas will always occupy the whole volume because by doing so, it is in a state which has a, a positive change in entropy. So if it were to just stay in chamber A, if it was just to continue to occupy chamber A, there would be no change in entropy associated with the system. But if it were to change to occupy A plus B, you would have an increase in entropy of N K B ln 2. And there you have it. Right, so in the next video, we are going to start talking about the information theory version of entropy. And again, like I said, some people think this is the most fundamental version of entropy, but it's certainly fascinating to see how all these different definitions of entropy are actually describing some fundamental concept that's much deeper than any one interpretation of it. Thank you.